everyone. I'm Sally Brown, and I currently serve as the executive director here of the Great Panthers. We want to welcome you to Convention 2013. Um, and we have a, a short program tonight to get ourselves started, and then some really interesting and exciting presentations tomorrow. And then we're going to do activism, which we're all about, down in the Hill on Monday, and end and, and with a, uh, a speech by Marion Wright Edelman about uh, preserving justice for the coming generation. Uh, we're very excited to be here and to start our convention tonight. Uh, our theme is uh, the ne Great Panthers, the next generation uh, uniting for justice. And so we have a short program tonight to really talk about that, where we've come from as Great Panthers and where we're going as Great Panthers. So first, um, I have a couple of messages from some early Great Panthers and people who've been involved with us who were not able to come and wanted to send a message of greeting to us. These are in your program, but I, I am assuming you haven't had a chance to read that, so I, I want to read their words to you. Sue Leary says, Dear Sally and all Great Panthers friends, in all the years that I worked for Maggie Kuhn, I came to understand how important it is to come together to reinvigorate, learn, and of course, network which you all have been doing, and it's been fun to watch all the mix and mingle. The Great Panthers conventions gave Maggie joy and inspiration, and she would love the theme of this one, highlighting her driving passion for generations working together. One of my favorite Maggie sayings was, we are on a mission, but we are also on a lark. So have a wonderful time, be outrageous and growl, but don't forget to purr. Best of luck. I am with you in spirit and wish you well as you carry forward a new vision for a great organization that I support with all my heart. And then we also have a welcome message from Leslie Suzanne, who was one of the original students who Maggie joined together with in the very beginnings of the Great Panthers before we were called the Great Panthers. And uh, she sent this message to us. I am so excited to envision the Grey Panthers next generation. The original vision of the Grey Panthers, even before we acquired that name, was to bring together those of us who were young activists in the anti-war and civil rights movements with elders from decades of social justice efforts union organizers, retired church workers, and longtime pacifists. These elders located the movements of the 60s and the 70s in a long history of struggles and a wider vision of justice. At the same time, the young members brought energy and the excitement of new commitment, giving the promise of continuity. From the beginning, the Grey Panthers was a bridge on which stood not only the grandparents, but the grandchildren linking the wisdom of the past and the hope of the future. In short, it was never merely a group of, by, and for the old. I argued from the first that ageism was at least as much an assault on the young as the old, who were its targets, because it misled the young into believing that their lives could only lose value and meaning as they lived on. From the first time that Maggie brought a few of her friends to Haverford to meet with Stanley Early, me, and a few other students, I felt that something powerful linked us across the age gaps. I could never have imagined, though, all that would come of that meeting. That the Great Panthers are still thriving more than 40 years later validates the belief that together, the elders and the young can create positive change. Keep growling. Um, I hope you found those as inspiring as I did when I received them in my email from them. It's, uh, I think, important for us all to think about our history, where we come from, to honor that, to build on the shoulders and the work of those who come before us, to work on our current, present efforts and to create the kind of future that we want. And that's what those people were doing. That's what we're continuing to do. I'm going to do one more reading, and then I'm going to turn it over to a couple of Great Panthers to speak to you. 
so in preparing for this uh, uh, convention and the theme, I happened across a document which I had actually never seen before um, that came from the very first Grey Panthers convention. It was in Chicago in 1975. And again, I find, you can tell this is 1970s language when you hear this, but I find it really inspiring, and to me it's the soul of the Grey Panthers that we continue to live out today. And so I just want to read this to you, and then we'll move into um, some current Grey Panthers and their uh, perspective. So this, uh, it was sort of called the preamble to the Constitution of the Grey Panthers at the time. The Grey Panthers who we are. We are a group of people, old and young, drawn together by deeply felt common concerns for human liberation and social change. The old and young live outside the mainstream of society. Ageism, discrimination against persons on the basis of chronological age, deprives both groups of power and influence. Besides being a movement of older and younger persons, as Great Panthers, we consider ourselves distinctive in the following ways. We are against ageism that forces any group to live roles that are defined purely on the basis of age. We view aging as a total life process in which the individual develops from birth to death. Therefore, we are concerned about the needs of all age groups and ageism directed at any age group. We have a strong sense of militancy. Our concern is not only for education and services, but also for effective nonviolent action with an awareness of timing and urgency. We advocate a radical approach to social change by attacking those forces that corrupt our institutions attitudes and values, such as materialism, racism, sexism, paternalism, militarism, and extreme nationalism. Um, I would just pose that a lot of that I find to be very relevant to today. <clears throat> and then it goes into what we want. One, to develop a new and positive self-awareness in our culture that can regard the total lifespan as a continuing process in maturity and fulfillment. Two, to strive for new options for lifestyles for older and younger people that will challenge the present paternalism in our institutions and culture, and to help eliminate the poverty and powerlessness in which most older and younger people are forced to live and to change society's destructive attitudes about aging. Three, to make responsible use of our freedom to bring about social change, to develop a list of priorities among social issues, and to struggle nonviolently for social change that will bring greater human freedom, justice, dignity, and peace. Four, to build a new power base in our society uniting presently disenfranchised and oppressed groups, realizing the common qualities and concerns of age and youth, working in coalition with other movements with similar goals and principles. And finally, five, to reinforce and support each other in our quest for liberation and to celebrate our shared humanity. Um, as a longtime Grey Panther, it was um, uh, fun to find this, to realize the relevance of it today, at the same time as realizing how much we've changed in those for almost 40 years in terms of the language and how we say some of the things we do, but that the power of that vision and those values are what drive us today as Great Panthers. We've stayed true to them for 40 years and continue to fight for that freedom, for dignity, for all, for creating social change. 
Um, the rest of our convention will look to this, talking about how can we look at the issues we care about, uh, the things we want to do, and bring young and old together to work for uh, change in our country and our communities and world. Mm -hmm.